Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. In today's Fountain Pen Showdown, we're going to be looking at two of my pens. The first one is this. This is made by PenBBS and it's the 487 model in Cordurite. And this is going to be going up against a Twisby pen. This is a Twisby Diamond 580 and this one is in the transparent pattern. So join me now down on the mat. We'll look at these pens, we'll compare them and then we'll do some ratings. So here we are, the first pen we're going to look at is this one. This is a Pen BBS 487. Now, yes, I've reviewed this before, but I've been using it a lot more since then. And I've got to be honest, I love this pen. This is the go-to pen when I need something and I don't have my everyday pen that I'm using for that day. This is the one I always reach out to. Let's have a quick look around it though. So we've got at the top, we've got this flat metal section. This is actually a magnet. Now, one of the things I like is it's embedded in the plastic and the pattern of the plastic, which is this cordyrite pattern, does keep on going. So it does look nice. It's nice and flat. I mean, you could stand it on its end if you wanted to. We then come down into the main cap. So here we've got a clip. It's really stiff, really hard to get into. Still fits really nicely though into my shirt pocket, which is fine because at the end of the day, the clip, well, for me, it serves two purposes. The first one stops the pen from rolling. The second one is to hold it in my shirt pocket, make it easy for me to get at when I'm out and about. If we come down into the main body, well, the cap here, it's the same width all the way down. It's this lovely cardiorite pattern, so it's transparent. But then you've got loads of different colours in here. I've got some browns in there. There's some silver, some blues. Really lovely patterning on this. So we come on down and then we've got a little tiny tapering from the cap down to the body. So it's not a sharp step down. You know, it's nice. You know it's there, but it tapers really, really well. In the body, again, the same width all the way down. Here you can see inside this metal disc, that's actually inside, that's a magnet. So this is a magnetic filling system. The idea is you take off the cap and the cap then attaches to, to this. And then you should be able to drag the cap down and then slowly move it back up to fill the pen. That's what's advertised, doesn't work. I've had this pen now for about six months. I've filled it three times. Yes, the ink in here does that last that long. And I cannot, for the life of me, get this magnetic filler to move. I have tried everything I can think of. I've searched the internet high and low. I did at one time get to move by taking off the end and then prodding it with one of my wife's knitting needles to loosen it. It then worked and then stopped. And now I can't even get to move with prodding. So to be honest, I do not use that magnetic filling. What I do when I fill this pen, I eyedropper it. We then come down to the end. And again, we've just got this nice sealed cap here. There's actually a little indentation there where you could screw something in if you wanted. I'm not sure what it is. I think there should be a cap there, but I've just got no idea because I can see the threads on the inside. All in all, though it looks really nice. I really do enjoy this pen. As I say, it's the one that I reach for when I'm looking for something to use. If we look at the second pen. Well, this one is a Twisby and it's a Twisby Diamond 580. I've got the transparent model here because I thought, well, by getting transparent, you don't have any ink that you want in it. So let's start looking at this one. So we'll look here at the top. So there we have the Twisby logo on the end of the cap. Nice bright red there. And we come back down and we can see the silver colored cap, the clip. Again, stiff, but nice and springy. Does the same as the other one. It lets me get in there, lets me get what I want. The cap on this one, it tapers out. So we're now at the end it tapers out until we get to this broad metal strip here. So on there we've got Twisby and on the back we've got five, Diamond 580. Then that then gives me a slightly tapered down to the body. 
the body feels like it's the same width but I don't know if you can see on the camera but the actual body itself is faceted so hopefully it's playing quite nicely in the light I love the fact that it's a demonstrator so you can see the ink it's fairly full at the moment but once it gets lower you know you really can see the gorgeous color of the ink coming through that demonstrator there We've then got the piston filling mechanism. So this one, as I said, yes, it's a piston filler. And then at the end here, I'm obviously I'm not going to turn it. We've got the cap, which is used to work that piston mechanism. So I'm just going to fetch in the other pen. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at the nibs. Let's look at these nibs side by side. So let's start with the 487. So this is a standard pen BBS nib. So it's a number six size nib. You know, it's a nice silver color. It's nothing special about it. I'd say it's that standard pen BBS nib, but I find all pen BBS nibs write really, really well. On the Twisby, again, we've got a Twisby nib here. Now this one is actually a broad nib. Why I'm pointing this out is when I bought this pen, well, I bought it with this nib, which was extra fine. And I was finding that as I'm getting on in my pen collection, I'm moving to more towards the medium and the broad nibs. And I wanted a 580 with a broad nib. Now, one of the beauties with these Twisbys is rather than having to buy an entire new pen, you can just buy the nib section. And that's what I did. I bought a broad nib and I just swapped them over. It took me all of about 30 seconds. Really simple. It just literally screws off and then new one screws on. And to buy that new nib, well, it was less than half the price of buying a new pen. But looking at the two nibs side by side, I'm just going to move one over so we can look at them literally as close as we can get. Lengthwise, the 487 is slightly longer. Of the two, I actually do prefer the shape of the Twisby because session, you know, where we can see here where it's narrowing a bit, it looks so much nicer. If we look at the sections on the two of these while we're here, you can see there's a slight tapering here on the 487. So it starts wide, comes in, then goes out to meet the body. Where here on the Twisby, Yes, you've got this metal cap, which does slightly taper down, but then the plastic just tapers straight out. Pop the caps back on, and let's do some measurements. So I'll fetch in my trusty rule. We'll start with a 487. So with a 487, let's line this up. So its length, when it's capped, is 14.1 centimeters. Uncapped, that comes in at 12.8 centimeters. Posted, posts really nice. That comes in at 17 centimeters. Fetching in the Twisby, so capped. That Twisby comes in at 14.1 centimeters, so only slightly shorter. Uncapped comes in at 12.9 centimeters. So again, just a slightly little bit longer. Posted. Now it will post onto here, but this is the blind cap. And I've got to be honest, every time I try and take it off, I end up twisting the cap and pushing a bit of ink out. So I strongly do not recommend you post this pen. Let's take a look at our, at our widths. With the 487, the body that comes in at 1.28 centimeters, the cap, 1.42. The section at its narrowest is 0.97, and that goes up to 1.12 centimeters. With the Twisby. So the body, 1.28 centimeters, so similar size. The cap, 1.43 centimeters. So size wise, they're virtually identical. Our section, well, this goes from 0.95 centimeters up to 1.06 centimeters. So the section is narrower. Worth bearing in mind if you prefer the narrower sections. Weight, let's fetch in the trusty scales. So with a 487, 25 grams. Cap alone, 11 grams. The, with the Twisby 580, so the whole thing. 30 grams, so a heavier pen. The cap, 14 grams. So definitely the 580 is the heavier of the two. 
The other thing we want to check, how easy is it to take that cap off? So here we go. Here's the 487. So we go half, one, one and a quarter, one and a half turns. So to me, that's just about right. With the Twisby, again, we go half, one, one and a quarter. Again, ballparkish. So they're both really nice and easy to take that cap off. Time now for the all important writing samples. It's fetching my notepad. So this notepad is by Oxford and it uses their optic white paper. So it's a really nice fountain pen friendly paper. So the first pen we've got, this is a pen BBS 487. And that is with a fine nib. The ink is by Colorverse. And it's called Supernova. To me, this is just an absolutely gorgeous blue ink. I'll fetch in my card. It's so bright. And I've got to be honest, it's the only ink I've had in this pen. And I've filled this so far three times with it. It's just really nice and bright. It's not in your face blue. It's not what I would call that schoolboy blue. It's just a lovely blue color that I really enjoy writing with. And no matter what I'm writing, it always looks nice. You know, it's a professional looking color, but it's also that fun color as well. So let's test our wetness immediately. You know, it's a nice wet ink, but you expect that immediate. We're going to leave it for five seconds. You know, you can really see this blues coming out. There's, you know, you've got some pale blue. You've got some darker blues as well. I love this ink. 10 seconds. So 10 seconds. Yeah, we've still got a lot of wetness in there. 20 seconds. Thirty seconds. You know, it's still got some wetness there after thirty seconds. So finally, we leave it for one minute. And even after a minute, you know, we've still got a little bit of wetness in there. So definitely, if you're looking for a quick drying and pen combination, this isn't for you. My next writing sample, I'm going to fetch the mic close to the paper so you can hear the pen write. So it's not the quietest nib that I've got. It's also not the loudest. It's smooth, but there's a slight hint of feedback. So you, you know you're writing, you can feel the pen going over the paper. I really like it. As I said, this is my go-to pen. It's going to reposition the paper. And we'll go for our writing sample with the second pen. So the second pen, it's a Twisby. Diamond 580. This has got a broad nib. The ink in here is by Diamine. And it's called Aurora Borealis. Now I've only had this ink a few weeks and it's very quickly becoming a favorite color. I mean, looking at the card here, it's it's got the greens, you know, it is just look like looking at the Aurora and, you know, I'd love to go and see an Aurora. I, I know it'll never happen. The other thing it reminds me though is looking into the ocean. Sometimes you get that great, dark greeny color coming through the ocean. Now, I think they would say this is tending towards a teal color. I'm not very good at names of colors. To me, you've got blue or green, but my wife informs me this is definitely going towards teal, but it's just a beautiful color and it goes down so well on the paper. You can look at this. As I said, this is particularly nice paper for fountain pens. I don't see any feathering. Remember, it's a broad nib, so it's a fairly wet nib. Let's check our dry times. Well, look, here we go, immediate. And look at that, we expect that. Let's wait for five seconds. To be honest, I don't see any difference between the two. 10 seconds. 20 seconds. 
30 seconds. You know, 30 seconds, we've still got some wetness in there. So finally, let's go for one minute. And after a minute, you know, we're still getting a little bit of smudging coming off. So still some slight wetness, certainly not as much as was coming from the 487. Here we are with, with the 487, but looking at the two, it's still slightly wet, but it's a broad nib. So it's putting down more ink. So it's not unexpected. Let's do our final writing sample. So again, I'll be repositioning the microphone so you can hear it right. really smooth it's to be honest it's like writing on glass it's such a smooth pen to write with now that i've got that broad nib in it when i add the extra fine it was definitely a lot more feedback to it but again that's because of the nib so you expect it so you know we are getting what we expect because of the different nibs there's a little bit of shading coming through this isn't the best paper that i've found to show shading but you do see some coming through I so said this, this ink is quickly becoming one of my favourite inks. So let's take this away and fetch both pens in. So here we are with both pens back. It's time to compare them. The 487, love the colouring, really do. This cardioid pattern is really nice. The ink, I love the ink in this pen, but it doesn't really show through the transparency here. So you can't really see it. It's that little bit too dark when it's in the barrel, which is a shame because I think with the right ink in here and that patterning, it would shine, look really, really nice. I'm really disappointed this magnetic filling system does not work because that was the whole point of buying the pen. As a result, I need to eye dropper it. Now that's fine. It's dead easy to eye dropper. And it takes such an awful lot of ink. As I say, I've only have to fill this up roughly once every two months. It lasts and it lasts and it writes and it writes. In terms of looks then, what am I going to give this as a score? Well, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. With the Twisby. This one, I wanted a transparent pen. That's what I got. I love the facets here. From you know, In person, you can really see the light coming off that. I'm not so sure how that would work when it's coming over the camera. You can see the ink, I mean, you can see that ink bubble there really flowing. The ink in that window looks really nice. Again, I think a lighter ink would really show this up better, but I love the color of this ink as well. So in terms of pen looks for this, again, I'm, I'm, really, I'm going to give it that 8 out of 10. Writing experience. They both write nicely. I mean, that's what we want our pens for, is to get ideas out of our head and onto paper. This one, it's got that bit of a scratchy feeling. It's got that little bit of feedback. You know, it's a fine nib. The Twisby, oh, it's so smooth. I would prefer a little tiny bit of feedback, but it's a broad nib, so I'm not overly worried because I don't expect that broad nib to give me too much. In terms of writing experience then, I'm going to give this one, I don't know, a 7 out of 10. I'm going to give this one, though, 9 out of 10. Ink flow. I've had no problems with the ink flow with either of them. You can see how wet they are. You can see how that ink comes out. I've had no issues with hard starts. I've had no issues with skips. Even in some of the really hot weather that we've had here, I've had no issues with the ink drying out in the feed. So in that terms, they're both the same. So I'm going to give these both a 9 out of 10. Value for money. This is the interesting star. This one here, the Carderite, the Pen BBS, that cost me 54 Australian dollars. The Twisby, Diamond 580, this one was 72 Australian dollars. As I said, I bought an additional nib unit for it, which was 33 Australian dollars. But that means I've got two nibs in this pen for about $100. Whereas if I wanted a different size nib for this one, well, A, you can't get them, so I'd have to buy it from another company. Then I'd have to buy another pen. So you're talking the same price. They both write beautifully, as I said. They both look all right. So value for money, well, I'm struggling with this one. And I've got to be honest, I can't differentiate value for money wise between the two of them. So I'm going to give them both an 8 out of 10. So that gives me total scores. 
So averaging over the four, for the 487, I came up with eight out of 10. And for the Twisby Diamond 580, I came up with eight and a half out of 10. As I've only had the broad nib in here for a few weeks, and as I said, the color's beautiful and becoming that I've started to like using this one. But this 487, this is the pen that I love to write with. This is a pen that I would reach for out as a preference to any other. And I've normally got five or six pens laying around all linked up. And if I don't have the one that I'm forcing myself to use for that day, I'll reach for the 487 before any of the others. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please hit that thumbs up button, give me a like. Have you got one of these pens? Why not drop a comment below, what's your experiences with it? How about inks? Are there any inks that you think look nice in these pens? Again, just drop me a comment below. Let's kickstart the conversation. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.